this lesson looks at a very brief overview of country risk, what it is, and why is it important. So this is just a very brief overview, looking at the different areas, and why actual analysts care to look at it. So country risk actually helps understand the risks associated with a particular country. This could be operating in that country, could be investing in that country, could be living in that country. And most analysts try to understand the interaction between the different areas of risk. So that's economic risk related to economic growth, strength of the economy, stability of the economy, and that includes maybe the banking sector as well as uh, the, the foreign and foreign sector, which is the external and trade sector. You'll also look at political risk, so this, um, whether or not the government is stable, whether it can implement reform, and you'll, you'll also look at financial market risk, so the risk of investing in the equity or currency or bond market. So in terms of a diagram, you can think of country risk as the circle, and inside that circle you have these different areas of risk which impact and influence each other. So economic risk can impact financial market risk, financial market risk can impact political risk, and vice versa. So this means that the different areas of risk are actually reflexive in the sense that one area of risk can affect another. For example, political risk can affect an economic and financial market risk and vice versa. Here's an example. So you have protests in the street and as fewer people are working and there's more uncertainty over consumption, we'll see weaker private consumption as well as lower investment. This will result in slower economic growth and if investors get very jittery, this could result in a weaker currency and a weaker equity market. If people are pulling their money out of the country, it's actually reflexive back to growth, for example, as there's less investment. And if growth slows to a certain uh, level, let's say it starts contracting even, then maybe it could even undermine support for the government even more. So it's kind of a circular argument sometimes in the sense that one area can affect another and then you can have a feedback loop. The reason why understanding country risk is so important and looking at the different areas of risk is because by better understanding country risk you can understand the business environment which you're operating in. Businesses can much better understand the economic outlook. Say that they want to set up a factory, they need to understand if their, if their property rights are going to be respected, if there's a good judiciary to to uh, resolve any disputes. You want to know that the economy is going to continue to grow so then they can, consumers can, can continue to purchase your product. You also want to know the political, political outlook in the sense that there's going to be political stability. Um, and of course the last one is investment outlook and risks in the sense that as an investor, whether you're investing in the currency market or the equity market or the bond market, that you will typically try and uh, see the risks associated with uh, the investments you're making. As such, understanding country risk really helps you uh, understand the risks of investing in a particular country. And it's very important because a lot of flows are now going from one country to another. For example, Americans investing in Myanmar or Thailand or Indonesia, for example. And so the need to better understand these economies is ever more important.